Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm happy to have Anna back with me today. <laughs> today, we're gonna show you how to frame a non-centered ridge. Have you ever done one of these? When you're doing a regular gable roof, locating the ridge is a simple matter. It's just dead center. You don't even have to think about it. But when you have two different pitches sloping up on each side, where is the ridge? On this model, we have a 1012 sloping up here and a 512 on this side. How do we locate the ridge? Now, Anna, when most carpenters are confronted for the situation, they'll simply pop out the lines on the floor. They'll pop out a line for the 1012 and they'll pop out a line for the 512. They know how to do that. And they'll just let those lines run wild and wherever they cross, that's the ridge. Now that gets the job done, but often we don't have a good flat place to snap the lines and it's not completely accurate. Now it's much easier and way more accurate to find the answer mathematically. To locate this ridge is basically an algebra problem. Anna, do you remember when in school they gave you that old word problem where a train was leaving Chicago at a certain time and speed and another train was leaving Milwaukee and you had to figure out where the two would meet? And that's basically what we have here. The 1012 is rising on this side and the 512 is rising on this side. Where will they cross? Where is the location of that ridge? Well, Roof Framer's Bible makes this very easy. I wrote this book some years ago and it's loaded with all kinds of information on framing all kinds of roofs and especially for these non-centered ridges. And I put a link in the description below so you'll know where to get one. Now, Anna, most people don't care for algebra. Wouldn't you rather get the answer from Roof Framer's Bible? For sure. On page 214, we have a simplified formula that will quickly give us that ridge location. Here it is. Okay, here's the formula in the book, and it's set up a little differently than the model we're going to do today, so I want to briefly review how this is set up in the book. Now, like our model, it has a 1012 on the high pitch side and a 512 on the lower pitch side. So if we go down here to our formula, we take the high pitch divided by the low pitch plus 1 and divide that into the overall span, and that will give us the high pitch rafter run. Now, we mentioned this is an algebraic formula, but people don't like algebra. They don't want the X's and Y's. So we've simplified this formula to eliminate that. And this plus one is really the algebraic part of this equation. So we take the high pitch, which in our case is 10. We divide that by the low pitch, which is five. That gives us two. We add one to it, that's three. We divide that into the overall span of 36 feet and that gives us the high pitch rafter run of 12 feet. And we see that in our drawing up here. Now I want to make clear that if you've got a situation with a roof that has where it runs down longer on one side, you first have to subtract off that portion because this formula is only valid if point A here and B here are level with one another. So you have to subtract that off. But as long as those two points are level, this formula will quickly and easily give you this ridge location and we'll show that to you on the model. Now to illustrate, Anna and I will show you on this model. The overall span is 8 feet or 96 inches. Now you'll want to subtract for the ridge, which is how much Anna? An inch and a half. Exactly. Now the span of 96 inches minus the inch and a half for the ridge will give you a net span of 94 and a half inches. And you want to figure it that way because you want these rafters to be like they were meeting right at the point at the ridge. That way when you pull them apart, they'll be exactly level with each other on each side of the ridge. All right, so we take the high pitch, which is 10. Anna's going to mark that for us. And we divide that by the low pitch, which is a 512. So 10 divided by 5 gives us 2. We add 1 to it, and that gives us 3. So we take our overall span, remember, was 94 and a half inches. We divide it by three, and that gives us 31 and a half inches, which is what, Anna? A high pitch run. So we pull over here, mm -hmm. 31 and a half inches, and that's our high pitch run to the side of the ridge. Now to get the run for the 512 side, all we do is take that full 96 inch span and deduct the 31 and a half inches of the high pitch run and the inch and a half for the ridge, and that gives us a run of the 512 side of 63 inches mm -hmm. right here to this side of the ridge. Quick and easy, we've got our ridge location. Now we need to be really clear that this formula is only valid if the hat points are the same. 
Do you remember what the half is, Anna? Yes, it's the height above the plate to the top of the rafter. The height above the plate to the top of the rafter. Mm -hmm. So if we've got right here is point A, straight up above the plate. And then over here, if this half point is point B, those have to be level with each mm -hmm. other. So the formula is figuring it from this point and that point. They have to be starting from level. If you've got a, ra a roof that runs down longer to another spot like here, it's not going to be valid. You first have to subtract that off so that you're going from two points that are level with one another. So there you have it, the quick and accurate way to get a ridge location on a non-centered ridge. Now you use the rafter runs to get the rafter lengths on each side. And Anna and I showed you in an earlier video, the beginner's guide to roof framing, how to do that, if you haven't seen that yet. So Anna, thanks for your help today. <laughs> Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. So you'll want to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our coming videos. Mm -hmm. And to be sure to catch all of our current videos, check out our playlist right here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you the next time.